Welcome to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, it's great to be back. We haven't seen each other in a little while because it's a busy time of year for everyone. Uh, the spring semester at Tech is in the home stretch, but you've been especially busy and we want to tell people about some of the different projects you've had going on. So since the last time we spoke, you've had the premiere of season three of your show on WCTE, Wish You Were Here, Adventures in the Upper Cumberland. You keynoted the Upper Cumberland Women's Club Luncheon. You were a guest on Mayor Randy Porter's podcast and shared some of your very inspiring story. I listened to the whole thing. And you were down in nearby Granville, Tennessee, dressed as Lucille Ball for their annual I Love Lucy Days. And I think you could have a lucrative side hustle as a Lucy impersonator. <laughs> Listen, Jonathan, it's been a busy month and uh, tourism has interesting twists and turns of what you're required to do. So uh, the Lucy impersonator of all those things on the list, <laughs> it was probably the hardest but I chalk that up to the 1950s hairdo. I mean, that is a bear to conquer. Um, I'm so glad that I was born in an era where you can wear your hair a little less hairpinned. I mean, I, I pulled about 100 hairpins out of my hair and, and uh, got rid of my headache all at the same time. It was a win-win. So... <laughs> but I will leave it up to the professionals for the Lucy impersonators. But I might add it to my resume. You never know. <laughs> I think now, you should. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, speaking of who's been really busy lately, our two guests today. In fact, we are in the presence of royalty, my friend. Did Wait, did Meghan Markle finally return my calls? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But today's guest is even better, and she has a beautiful crown just the same, because she is Miss Tennessee Tech 2023, Leela Gracie. Oh, she's beautiful inside and out and super smart. She's going to tell us all about being a homecoming queen and, listen to this, what it's like studying computer science with a concentration in cybersecurity and French. You heard me right. I cannot wait to hear from her. And then we're going to be speaking with Tennessee Tech alumnus and award-winning sports writer Thomas Cohern. Thomas has been Tennessee Tech's sports information coordinator since 2016 and previously spent 10 years at the Herald Citizen, our local newspaper. He was also a student writer for the yearbook and the Oracle, our student newspaper, which just celebrated its 100th anniversary this month. Well, Thomas is a great guy and you're going to want to hear his story. So let's get right to those interviews. But up first, it's our conversation with the reigning Miss Tennessee Tech, Leela Gracie. Our next guest introduction really only requires three words, Miss Tennessee Tech. Leela Gracie was crowned with that title based on the votes of her fellow students at Tech's 2023 homecoming game. And she is here to challenge every single thing you think you know about homecoming queens. Leela is a senior from Fayetteville, Tennessee, majoring in computer science with a concentration in cybersecurity and French. Leela, she is Senior Ambassador at the University's Cybersecurity Education Research and Outreach Center, better known as CROC. Now, she has been a counselor at the university's Gen Cyber Summer Camps and is a student worker in the university's Volpe Library. Now, when she's not being crowned with a tiara at the homecoming by President and First Lady Oldham, you can find her serving as Associate Justice for SGA's Supreme Court and serving as a student ambassador for the College of Engineering. You are hearing all of this correctly. Leela, I am so impressed with you already, and we haven't even asked you our first question. Welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Now, let's get down to business. First, Leela, talk with us about these two very, very different fields of study. Computer science with a concentration in cybersecurity and French. Clearly, you're someone who enjoys a good challenge. And what made you want to do that? And what has this experience been like for you? Right. So they are very two different fields. And I get that question a lot. Um, so back in high school, I always want, knew I wanted to do some sort of engineering, but I wasn't necessarily sure what type. Um, 
I had known I wanted to go to Tech since sophomore year of high school, um, and I was looking at their different programs that they had, and computer science really stuck out to me as one of their top programs. And I had done a little bit of coding, but I wasn't too sure on computer science as a major. But then I found the cybersecurity concentration. And so as a freshman, that is what I declared my major as computer science with a concentration in cybersecurity. Um, and I've been really blessed. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it so far. I've loved the faculty. I've loved all of the people that I've gotten to work with. And I've loved um, the really cool and amazing things I've gotten to learn. And then French uh, actually originally started out as a minor. I had always been interested in learning, learning languages and I'd been really good at it in high school. And so I was like, oh, just for fun, I'll do a French minor. And then my French professor, Dr. Duthois, pulled me aside one day and said, hey, you're really good at this. Have you ever considered double majoring? I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, that sounds like a lot of school and I'm not sure if I want to do that. But I looked into it and it's actually only an extra year. I was like, oh, why not? You know, so um, it's been an absolute blast. I've loved every second of it, um, but it has been very much two different sides. Layla, take us back to homecoming 2023. You're on the football field at halftime and they say your name for Miss Tennessee Tech. What was that moment like for you? Um, it was it was very surprising. I was really shocked when that happened. Um, I'm actually one of the first non-sorority candidates to get Miss TTU, I believe since the 1960s. And so when I started my candidacy and I started running for Miss TTU, um, I wasn't necessarily intent on winning. As weird as that sounds, I was like, you know, this will be a fun experience. And my peers had encouraged me to do it or at least try it. Um, and so, you know, I was like, what's there to lose? Why not? Um, and so I was, I was genuinely really surprised that I won Miss Tennessee Tech. And I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Now, Leela, thanks to young leaders like you, women are making important advances in STEM fields. But Pew Research finds that women still make up a quarter of fewer of workers in computing and engineering. Now, what is your message to your peers and young women who might be thinking of a career along these lines, but wondering if it's really cut out for them? So it is definitely challenging, um, but my advice for any young woman that is considering a career in STEM or engineering is definitely don't let anyone discourage you. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something or that you shouldn't do something because of who you are. Um, never let other people make those choices for you. Um, a lot of people, I'm blonde. Um, and so a lot of people look at me and they go, oh, you know, she's just a dumb blonde. I don't know how she got here. Um, but don't let anyone stereotype you or make those decisions for you. Prove them wrong every single time. Um, and it's a really good feeling when you get to do that, when you get to prove everyone wrong. Well, I think that is great advice. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you had any doubters, but if you did, you've certainly proved them wrong with all that you've achieved here at Tech. And now you're getting to the end of your time uh, at Tech. You're a senior. So we've got to ask people, people are curious. They want to know your future plans. Uh, what, what does the future hold for Leela Gracie? Um, the future holds a lot. And even though I am a senior, I do not graduate until May of 26. Uh, because as I previously mentioned, I am a double major. So here recently in the coming months, um, after the semester ends over the summer, I will be doing an internship uh, up in Dahlgren, Virginia with the Naval Warfare Center, um, which I'm super excited about. And then I will come back to tech in the fall of 24. But in the spring of 25, I will actually be doing a study abroad for the entire semester in France, which I'm so excited for. Um, and then after that, I'll have my last year here at Tech. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what the future holds, but my goal is to work for the US government abroad. I really want to be able to combine both 
the field of cybersecurity and a foreign language um, and utilize those at once. Well, Leela, it sounds like your opportunities are endless and I'm excited to follow your future path and see what's in store for you. But whatever it is, it's going to be great. And it sounds like you're going to have an amazing final senior year. So uh, safe travels. And I hope that you enjoy the entire learning experience. And uh, you're only young once, so live it up while you can. But finally, Leela, we like to end each interview with the same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, thank you for saying that. That's really kind of you. But one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted my life is... I did not always used to be very confident. Uh, I was, I had really bad social anxiety. I did not like talking to people. I would have never done anything like this podcast. I would have never, ever in a million years thought about running for Miss TTU. Uh, my 16 year old self would have thought I was insane for that. Um, so definitely one thing that Tennessee Tech has really changed for me is everyone here is so supportive. And I don't mean just students and my peers, even though they have been nothing but supportive and amazing, um, but faculty as well. I've had a lot of professors um, and tech staff, and they really just want to see you succeed. They want to see you to your best and highest potential. Um, I've rarely ever had anyone say anything mean or say that I couldn't do something everyone has been super supportive um and I'm really grateful for that I've definitely gained a lot of confidence as a young woman um and as a young woman in STEM and I've learned that even though it's kind of cliche and might sound cheesy uh anything you put your mind to you really can accomplish and I truly believe that well that comes through in everything you've said today thank you so much for taking the time with us today and um, joining us on College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. It was lovely to meet you all. If you have ever attended, read about, or even seen a photo of an athletic event at Tennessee Tech University, chances are our next guest had something to do with it. Thomas Cohern has been Sports Information Coordinator at Tennessee Tech for nearly a decade. In this role, he oversees all media relations efforts over football, women's basketball, and softball, and assists with efforts across all other tech athletic programs as well. He also serves as a photographer for sporting events, and prior to that, covered the university for 10 years as a writer and assistant sports editor at the Herald Citizen, Cookville's local newspaper. But that's not all. Thomas is also a proud tech alumnus, graduating from the university in 2005 with a degree in interdisciplinary studies. While a tech student, Thomas wrote for the Eagle Yearbook and the Oracle Tech Student Newspaper. His nearly 25 years of writing about and for Tennessee Tech have earned him widespread recognition. His writing has won awards from the Tennessee Press Association, the Tennessee Sports Writers Association, and others. Thomas, welcome to College Town Talk. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to have this opportunity. Well, Thomas, there's so much we want to ask you, but first, uh, why sports writing? Obviously, uh, that's something you're very passionate about, but you've done other writing as well. In fact, at the Herald Citizen, you did movie reviews and even covered Bonnaroo for seven years. So what was it about sports writing that resonated with you? Honestly, it goes back to watching ball games growing up with my dad. And it, it's a simple explanation of that. And, and I've always loved being able to tell a story, uh, just being able to come up with just details and everything and just explain wh- what's happening. Why is it important? There's a quote I love from Earl Warren, the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. I always turn to the sports section first. The sports page records people's accomplishments. The front page has nothing but man's failures. And I think it resonates because on the sports page, you see exactly the, the ideal of what humans can accomplish, what we can do. Um, you look at Michael Phelps in the Olympics back so many years ago and all of the efforts he did, all the gold medals he won. And you, you don't, you, you kind of overlook all the negative stuff you see about everything. I mean, you just, just think about, I want to do that. I, how do I, how do I do that? Um, I'm not an athlete. Uh, my, my coworkers, my friends, they will attest to it. I am a klutz. 
to trying to play sports. Uh, that's not me, but I can write with the best of them. So I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll honestly take the opportunity to write about it and share the stories of our student athletes. I love this positivity that you're exuding and the fact that you're putting um, such a spin on sports. That's an angle that I've never thought of before. And um, that just, I, I'm going to have to, after this podcast, I'm just going to have to sit down and think deeply, Thomas. You've, <laughs> you've inspired me. Uh, there was just so much to unpack out of that. Uh, speaking of unpacking something, there's a lot to unpack in the excitement about the new Golden Eagles football head coach, Bobby Wilder. Now, I met him. He is so enthusiastic, so ready to roll. I mean, he is just on fire for Tennessee Tech. He is such a likable guy. And the plans to rebuild the west side of Tucker Stadium, oh, my goodness. I know you have to be excited. But as someone who loves Tennessee Tech sports, what has that combination of the hiring move and the stadium building campaign meant to you? Having Coach Wilder join the athletic staff here as the new head football coach, it's exciting. The guys have bought in so much into the system. Uh, they're ready to go hit the wall or go hit the whatever opponents in front of them. And it's, in, it's, it's contagious. How can you not be excited about football when you have a guy like Coach Wilder who is so excited about trying to bring that uh, tradition back to the sport. A lot of people don't realize we actually lead the conference in, in championships in football. So we are trying to rebuild something that hasn't been there since the 70s. Rebuilding the stadium is an awesome, awesome project. Walking in to check the first time in 2000 that the student Tucker Stadium needed a facelift then. And... 24 years later, it's it's gotten worse, and it needs some refreshment. It needs some rejuvenation, and this this project is a huge step on that. And it is something that I think a lot of people don't quite realize. It extends beyond the Tennessee Tech community. There are a lot of local teams that play in the stadium. There's also events and uh, that can be put on in the stadium, and having that rebuilt and rejuvenated. I think will go a long way towards helping out in the community and bringing more stuff to Cookville and the upper Gun. Well, Thomas, you talk about the excitement that people have for tech football. Uh, you got to give yourself some credit here because I think a lot of that has to do with, with your writing uh, and uh, you, your skills as a writer and a journalist have obviously taken you far. And as we mentioned in the introduction, you sharpened those skills here at Tennessee Tech by working at the Oracle, our student newspaper, which just celebrated 100 years this month. Uh, there was a, a great event on Saturday here on campus, but I, I learned at that event, and I got to give credit to Kelly Chambers, the assistant director of the Crawford Alumni Center, who uh, shared with me this piece of information. You were working at the Oracle on September 11th, 2001, and you were part of the staff that had to react to that major world event and decide how you as, a stu as student journalists were going to cover that here on campus. Uh, what can you tell us about your memories at the Oracle? That was actually a really great time. And I've worked with a lot of great people over the years. That's actually how I got into sports information here at Tennessee Tech, because I worked with Matt Shaver, whose father, Rob, was the head FID here at the time. But yeah, the, that September 11th, 11th day, I was actually in the Oracle lab working on my column for the paper that week. It was like three days after we had played Air Force. So uh, Brenda Wilson, who was the faculty advisor to Oracle, she comes in and says there's a plane that hit the tower. And I was sitting here thinking, oh, that had to be like pilot error or something like that. And then we hear the report that the second one had hit. And everything just became surreal at that point. I was supposed to have an interview with uh, the dean of the College of Education that day. And we were both sidetracked trying to watch the news rather than... I can't even remember what the, the topic of the story was. And it was probably one of the worst interviews I've ever done because we were all so transfixed on what was happening. Um, but yeah, the, the staff all came together, gave, uh, came up with a game plan, who was covering what, and trying to get as much detail and try to put this, everything together. And it was funny. One of my first days in the Oracle Lab, when they were getting everything ready for remodeling and putting in the cubicles, I found the edition uh, that was right after John F. Kennedy's assassination and how the Oracle covered it then. And I never thought that I would have to deal with a situation like that, but it only happened like eight months later. Um, but 
that night, I met one of my closest uh, college friends, Ryan Nation. He was up in the Oracle lab, and we just talked about it for about three or four hours and just kind of letting it decompress. And it's amazing how close friendships can form in times of distress or uh, tragedy. And, but I love every minute working with the, on the Oracle. So many people, some of them unfortunately have passed on since, but it, it was a great experience and it's one I'll always remember. Well, on the point of experience, Thomas, your role today often requires you to be a prolific writer. And also you need a flexible schedule because it's not uncommon for you to be sending out news releases late at night or the middle of the weekend summarizing a game that just wrapped up, you know, all of those deadlines that have to happen quickly. You're reporting out things that would be old news in two or three days. So you're having to do it just right then. So um, inquiring minds want to know your secret. How do you typically structure your days in order to balance it all? Because it's a lot. It is a lot. And honestly, I credit that a lot to uh, copious amounts of caffeine. Uh, my, my, my girlfriend actually teaches a business class in, at one of the area high schools. And she, she used me as an example as a poor example of work-life balance. And she, she, uh, she was joking, but... Um, <laughs> hey, it, it, truth is truth, man. <laughs> truth is truth. But no, I mean, in some of the busiest times of the year, it's not uncommon for us to be working about 65 to 75 hours a week. And, but the stories have to get out there. The stories have to get to uh, the media. They have to get up on the website. There's social media aspects. And then we still have to do the normal nine to 12, eight to five uh, grind. So it's, it's tiring. But it's it's been I mean it's reward because you get to you get to spend so much time with a lot of awesome people whether the coaches whether the student athletes whether it's administration sometimes you're traveling with the teams and the, the places you get to go see so it's a lot but it's a lot of fun Thomas it sounds like you're you've been trained your whole life to work in tourism because your job is a lot like my job and every day is a new surprise and a new deadline and. You just got to be a professional juggler on the side. You, Absolutely. you're really good at what you're doing here. Thank you. I mean, and, and there, but whether it's keeping stats, taking photos, or writing the releases, putting together media guides, putting together quotes, uh, putting together press kits, it, it's a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Thomas, we like to end each interview with the same question, and I'm very interested to hear how you answer this because you've had a continuous connection to Tennessee Tech for going on a quarter century at this point. Uh, the question is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? That, that's a very good question. And honestly, without Tennessee Tech, I probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunities that I've had in my career. I had a Coming out of high school, I had a full ride to MTSU, and my my sister, my two sisters were already coming to Tech. My parents, my dad was ill ill at the time, and they were like, "Let's keep you all keep you all together." So I four, four went to the scholarship at MTSU, went to Tech, almost immediately started working with the student newspaper, and I, I sit here and think about it. I was writing for the Oracle as a freshman, hadn't even taken a journalism class yet. And I, because of the opportunity they gave me, it's 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 kind of snowballed and built. If I look back, if I did that at any other university, I may not have had that opportunity. And it was because of the, the initiative, the drive to do it. But from working for the Oracle, that's how I got into sports information. That's how I made connections with the newspaper, with the Herald Citizen. So without being a part and being connected at Tennessee Tech, I have no idea what I'm getting. Well, Thomas, thanks so much for your time today and for being our guest on College Town Talk. We appreciate it. Appreciate you guys having me. And for our listeners, keep up with the latest on Tennessee Tech sports, including Thomas's stories, photos, and news releases by visiting ttusports.com. How great are those two? We want to thank Leela Gracie and Thomas Cohern for being our guests today on College Town Talk. Absolutely. And thanks to all of you for listening each week. We've just got a couple more weeks of new episodes before we take some time off for the summer, and you're not going to want to miss them. 
And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a review, and share this podcast with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. We'll meet you back right here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.